Hey YouTube, it's Robert here with a video on 10 ways that you can save some money on your next remodeling project. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Robert and I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs. And if you're watching this video in 2021 and you're trying to get any kind of project done at your house, you're probably very aware that it's a little bit of a challenging time because demand is through the roof and we're watching uh, both material and labor costs rise almost in real time. People have had a year to be stuck at home looking at things that they really want to change. Uh, they've been canceling vacations and other things that give them additional money to put into their home. We're seeing interest rates very low while housing values rise. So it's been easy for people to take money out and start getting some projects done. But it's just this huge increase in demand along with some other uh, kind of exterior factors um, have really contributed to a massive rise in material costs as well as in labor costs. So it's been a little bit of a challenge and for that reason I wanted to share this video on how you can save some money on your next remodeling project. Now these tips that I'm going to share with you are I think in many cases specifically applicable right now but will still hold true in a majority of markets. So you know even when things slow down you can remember these general principles for future projects and they'll still hold true. So in this video I'm not going to be giving you any suggestions to save money that involve things like buying used products from people on Craigslist. I'm not going to be suggesting you to get a 30 pack of beer and some pizzas and try and convince your friends to come over and help demo the place. Uh, I'm not telling you to, you know, go out and try and find the absolute cheapest guy to do it. I'm not, you know, I'm really not focused on those type of ways. Sure, you can potentially save some money in those areas, but a lot of times you end up spending that money later fixing certain things along the way. So I'm, I'm not suggesting that you go out and buy the cheapest material. Uh, I still think you should try and find a bona fide licensed contractor to do your work. And I'm going to give you some tips that assume we're still going through more of a traditional approach uh, in, in terms of finding the right products and finding the right people to do the work. So before we jump into some of these tips, I would very much appreciate it if you hit that like button and comment down below with any questions or thoughts that you might have at the end of this video. If you like what you saw, I would love for you to subscribe and you know join me for future videos, I'm trying to bring out more content more consistently. And for those of you that have already subscribed, I very much appreciate it and I appreciate those of you that have requested for certain topics to be covered. It really does help me generate ideas for future videos that are really valuable for you guys. All right, so number one, and this might seem a little bit obvious, but for those of you watching this video, you're already doing it, and that is to start doing some of the research and the legwork ahead of time. So take advantage of Pinterest, take advantage of house.com, HGTV, all these free resources that are available for you to spend the time figuring out what it is that you want your remodel to look like. Do all of that before you go and sit down with a contractor and an interior designer, uh, before you start going in and looking at products, because what that's doing is that's saving the contractors and anybody that you're working with a lot of time in having to guess what it is that you actually want to get done. If they can basically look at a vision that you've already put together and just figure out how to execute it for your specific home, they don't need to worry about somehow billing you for all that time that they would have otherwise had to spend. And yes, it would have been built in somewhere. It's There's really no such thing as, as free in our industry, especially right now. So whether it was built into additional margin on product or additional charges on their labor, they would have figured out how to put it in there somewhere. So number two, and these are in no particular order, but I kind of mentioned in the first tip that a contractor can take your vision and execute it for your home specifically. And number two is to try and work within the natural elements of your home. The more that you strip that house down to the studs and have to rebuild it from there, uh, the more that you end up with basically an empty shell, the more expensive it is to put it all back together. So if there's certain walls that maybe you don't love where something was placed, but you can still make something work with it, 
it's gonna be less expensive to keep it that way. You tear that wall down and now you may have additional costs to move the electric boxes. Uh, you may have plumbing changes that need to be made. And those things just kind of tend to snowball. So if we can work within some of the natural confines that that house had to begin with, embrace what the house was and not try and turn it into something completely different. I've seen that happen a bunch with people trying to make their house very, very modern on what was otherwise not really a modern home. Well, some of those results are beautiful, but they spend a lot of money in achieving it. So if you're able to just embrace some of those natural features that the house was built with, you will keep some of your overall costs down by just updating things as opposed to completely redoing it all. All right, and number three may apply more to some of you than others, but for the things that you may be able to tackle yourself, Take a look at those before you go and pay somebody else to do it. Now, if you're not a real handy person, if you don't like DIY projects, um, then this may not apply to you. If your time is much more valuable spent on your career because you make a couple hundred dollars per hour, well, first of all, good for you, uh, but it may just not make any sense. You may not be saving money by doing it yourself. Your time's better spent somewhere else. But if you like doing some of those projects and you're handy with them, then you can save a lot of money by doing some of the demo work, uh, you know, pulling out cabinets or pulling out floors. Uh, some of those things can be pretty big costs if you're paying somebody else to do it. So, like I said, that's not gonna apply for everybody, uh, but for those of you that it does apply to, uh, definitely look into that because you may be able to save thousands. All right, number four, and this one becomes more applicable the more things we're trying to get done but make sure we're doing things in the right order. Have a list of all the things that you're wanting to change and figure out what the most logical sequence is to actually execute those. Uh, for example, if we have a pony wall that we want to remove and we have painting that we want to be done and we have flooring that we want to put in, well, that pony wall should come out before those other two items get done. But I've seen many instances where that exact scenario is done backwards. So they have flooring that's put in, they have the whole thing painted, and then they tear this wall out, and now we have drywall damage going up the wall that needs to be repaired, retextured, and painted, but that painting needs to be done more than just that little area so that it looks like it's feathered in and, and natural with the rest of the wall. They now have a whole area of exposed concrete where they had flooring put in, and now that needs to be patched, which in some cases with certain floors, is very difficult and expensive to do, but all of that could have been avoided if they had removed that wall first and then done the other things. Now they're only doing it once and they saved a ton of money because of that simple change and having those events happen in the right order. In general, the right order would be the more structural the change is in nature, the earlier it should be done. And then more of the cosmetic elements like paint, like flooring, your fixtures should be done last. That doesn't always hold true 100% of the time, but as a general rule of thumb, that would be my recommendation for you. My other recommendation, rely on your contractor to help manage that project and, and make sure that those events are being done in the right sequence. And number five, and for this one, you're also gonna benefit by having an organized list of the things you're trying to get done in your home, but the more that you can do at the same time with the same contractor and in often cases the same material, the more money you're gonna save. A lot of contractors, and we'll use a plumber for example, have minimum labor charges just to come out to your house so that if it's a really small thing you're trying to get done, um, like maybe changing out a faucet, well, what they might charge you for that, uh, let's say it's $50, that's not even gonna cover their cost of getting out to your house for something that's a very simple and quick task they have to add that minimum labor charge to make it actually profitable for them to even go and do that job. Now, if you have a whole bunch of fixtures that are gonna be changed and now they're charging you that rate for all of those items, they may not need to charge you that minimum labor charge and at worst you're only paying it once instead of every time you call them out for a bunch of small things that could have been done together. You also wanna make sure that you let that contractor know ahead of time all the things that you would like them to do so that they can come out prepared with all the right tools and just handle them together and not have to charge you trip charges for these smaller projects.
This also applies on the material side. If you go to a Home Depot or Lowe's and you can buy painter's tape, for example, in one roll versus the contractor pack where it's eight or 10 rolls, you notice each roll costs a little bit less when you're buying it in bulk. And you see that you know in, in a variety of industries. But in remodeling, some of your larger purchases, that really starts to take effect. Buying a couple boxes of tile versus a couple pallets of tile on a per square foot basis, you could save 10, 15, 20% when you're buying these things in larger quantities. So if you're planning to do large areas and it's either phase it out or try and tackle it all at once, by purchasing those materials all together, you're definitely gonna save some money in most instances. All right, number six. If you are having one particular contractor handle a very large scope for you, you are still entitled to see what some of the individual line items are gonna cost. So don't let a contractor just throw out one lump sum grand total at you, tell you it includes all of these things, and then have no idea what individually any of those are costing because there could be instances where the contractor is not overly competitive on one or two of those items and you would have been better to sub that out to a separate contractor or they're just padding certain areas. That's not uncommon either. I'm not telling you to go in and try and nickel and dime and negotiate on every line item because that's not appropriate. It's not worth it for you to do that. It's, it's probably going to upset a contractor if they have to go in and negotiate every element of a job. So I don't suggest that you try and do that at all. But you want to make sure that, that they're not taking advantage of the fact that they've packaged this all together. And so there's individual items that are just overly inflated. You have every right to know what some of those items are costing. Just don't take it to an extreme. All right. And number seven, once you've sat down with the scope and you have somewhat of a grand total of what you're looking at, or even earlier on in the process, if you're looking at a particular product that you're trying to make decisions on, it's okay to ask your retailer or your contractor or salesperson where you could maybe save some money on that. And that may be by paying cash versus using a credit card, or it may be by shifting from one product to a very similar product that is just a little bit less money. Some of those things, they may not volunteer if they feel like you're in love with a particular product because they don't want to come across as insulting um, by trying to move you over to a cheaper version. But if you're asking them for it, yeah, they may have a very easy alternative to offer you that could save you some money. It's always worth at least asking those questions. The number eight is going to focus a little bit on product selection, but if you're trying to save some money when you're going out and you're selecting materials for your remodel, avoid products that feature some patented latest and greatest technology. Because what's often going to be the case is it's only one brand that offers it, or maybe it's something that one or two brands have some version of it, but technology is always at its most expensive when it's first introduced. Think about that with anything electronic in nature, but even with building materials, when you've got a brand that can feature something that differentiates them from all the other brands, usually their manufacturing practices have not been refined enough for them to start making it at its most cost efficient version. And they don't have any competition to help drive the cost of that technology down. So if you go one or two generations back, that you're not really getting something that's outdated by any means, but you're not paying for the premium of that latest and greatest technology, that's always an easy way for you to save money. That applies on flooring products, that can apply on appliances. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're selecting materials. And number nine, again, in selecting materials for your home and selecting things like appliances, uh, always consider overstock or in stock offerings. I'm not saying buy liquidated goods where there was maybe something wrong with it or you don't really know under what conditions the company acquired it. But when you have products that were um, bought by a store in large quantities, they would have been able to purchase those at a lower cost. That's the only benefit really for them to have purchased a whole bunch at once is if there's a cost savings just like I talked about in one of the earlier tips, and they purchase them at an earlier date, which means any price increases and inflationary effects on the cost of those products, they didn't incur because they bought it earlier. So those are areas where you can potentially save some money if you're going to a store that has a bunch of stuff that's in stock. 
uh, because they're incentivized to get rid of it. They have a cash outflow. They had a benefit of buying it and stocking it that made them do that purchase to begin with. So a lot of times there's some huge benefits for you if you are able to find a product that you like that was an overstock or an in-stock product. And last but not least, we've got number 10 for you. I know this was a long-winded video, but this particular tip I think is especially valuable during today's market uh, where contractors have a lot of potential work and we can be a little bit more choosy as to who we do work for. But this is relevant always, and that is, be pleasant, be easy for a contractor to do work for. I mean this in a few ways. When you go into a retail showroom and you're working with a salesperson, the more pleasant you are, the more likely they're gonna be to offer any available discounts or volunteer information, alternatives to, to what you might be looking at that can save you some money. They're gonna look for ways to help you. And that oftentimes is gonna come monetarily as well as just offering you better service. Also, when you're working with contractors, they wanna go into a home that they feel welcomed in and they don't feel like it's a pain for them to actually do work for you. And there are a lot of people that contractors complain about having to have done work for and they tack on additional fees, they pad their bids so that it's worth their while to actually do work for that person. This also applies to putting restrictions and limitations on a contractor. If you have a contractor that you're asking to come in and do a whole bunch of work for you, and then you tell them that they can only work Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. to three in the afternoon because then your kids are home and you can't have anybody in your house while your kids are there, well, that may turn a three-day job for them into a six-day job. And now they have to bill you for another few days of work that they could have eliminated altogether. Things like that are real costs that contractors incur when you make it difficult for them and you put a bunch of additional demands and restrictions on how they can do work for you. The more you can let them come in, do what they do, and do it effectively and efficiently for you, the more money you're gonna save the better relationship you're gonna have with that contractor and the less likely they're gonna to be to walk off the job halfway through and leave certain things for you to figure out somebody else to do it because they had enough. Um, right now especially, that's a horror story that we have a lot of clients that come to us after having a contractor walk off the job because they were asked to do something that was not their expertise or they were um, had to deal with a very difficult client that they just got fed up with and left. Um, it's just kind of the sad reality of it. So that's it with all that information I provided you today. I hope you found at least some of it valuable. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button for me. That helps me out a lot. Comment down below with any questions or comments that you might have. If you have anything you'd like to see me make a video on in the future, you can share it down there below. And if you would like to see more content from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Again, my name is Robert and I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs. So until next time, happy remodeling and have a great day.